Okay, um, this is going to be a little tutorial on how to use or how to set up occlusion in RenderMan from uh, reading from a brick map to apply an occlusion pass, a pre-baked occlusion pass to um, a RenderMan light or a Maya light. And my screen capture software is a little slow, so please bear with me, okay? Alright, correct size. So what we're going to do is, we're started out here, I have made a little simple scene with just a sphere and a plane here, and there are two lights, the key and the fill. These are just normal Maya lights. I think the key has a shadow on it, yeah. So quickly, I'm just going to really run through this really fast. Um, the problem that we were running into at BYU is that when we'd render with an environment light uh, calculating occlusion, the occlusion would be applied to the ambient light pass, but not to any of our Maya lights, and so our result would look really muddy, really washed out, because all of the nice darks that were supposed to be happening with the occlusion were getting brightened uniformly by these lights. So um, to fix that, um, we have set up, we've done a little bit of a setup with slim and with baking environment lights that I'll show it to you now, and I'm sorry I haven't practiced this at all, so my uh, lines are very broken. And non existent. Okay, so what I did is I just made a RenderMan environment light by clicking on this button. And we're going to go and edit some of these numbers. Um, I'm going to turn the intensity to zero because I'm not interested in having an environment light uh, influence my scene at this point. I'm going to check, uncheck my primary visibility so it doesn't show up in the render, but I'm going to leave the other things. And um, I'm going to turn my max variation to one so we can at least get kind of a good quality on our occlusion. And now I'm going to set up a, a baking pass. So this is going to do a pre-pass before my render. It's going to render the image and save out the information it finds to a point cloud file, which it's then going to store in a brick map. And a brick map is like a 3D texture map that RenderMan understands. So I'm right-clicking in this field that says Bake Shadowing. I'm right-clicking and I'm going to select Create Make Global Diffuse 3D. And what this does is this goes through and automatically tells RenderMan that we're going to want a couple new uh, passes and sets them up for us. Sorry, this window is really big. You open up your RenderMan settings, you can go in and see that if we look under our pass settings tree, we've got our final pass here, but before that calculates, it's going to do the render global diffuse 3D pass and the make global diffuse 3D pass. And that's perfect, and right now uh, they're set to reuse, which we don't want. We want it to calculate them, so I'm going to set them both to calculate, which is that little green check box. Um, great. So now, this isn't actually going to do us any good, because if we render it, which I'm going to make sure my render settings are correct. I'm going to do an internal render first. If we render it, we should see the image render out, and then have our occlusion not be applied. And now we're going to, I'll show you how to set it up so that the light can actually um, look at the occlusion and not cast light where there should be occlusion. Okay, So we saw our pre-pass run right there and now as we wait you can see that it was generating the brick map and okay so we have no occlusion. Let's fix that. I'm going to start doing uh, renders to the farm so it maybe can go a little bit faster and I'm going to pin this so we can not have to be always tabbing back and forth. Okay. Um, First of all, let's make sure we have ray tracing turned on, because I am doing ray traced occlusion right now. So I'm going to set in my features, scroll down, yep, ray tracing is on, we're good to go. So what's next to do is open up our and the little slim palette, okay? So we open up slim right here, and I've pre-prepared a palette um, for you, or for myself, but I'll show you what is done in the palette so that you can replicate it yourself. Whoa! Windows are going a little bit mad here. Okay, so in my palette I have a key light. This is an all-purpose key light. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, and of course my computer is running slow. Video capturing really takes it out of it, doesn't it? Okay. Um, 
Okay, so we have a key light, and this key light is just a normal RenderMan shader, except for it has a nice little uh, feature. If you scroll down, you can see that there is a place to put in an input occlusion map. And what that does is that'll tell the light that wherever this map is dark, the light should not cast its influence. And But that, that value is also dependent upon this light AO molt slider right here. If you have it at zero, the occlusion will do nothing to the where the light reaches, and if you have it at one, it will be a complete influence. So that's, that's kind of how you can control the intensity of your occlusion once you have it in. But first, uh, we want to see how we can read in our map that we're creating with that pass. And uh, mm, if you can see here, I've got an SL box attached into my key that's uh, reading right into that input occlusion hook right there. So there's an SL box. And the reason we had to do this is because in Slim, there's no ready-made node that will read in a 3D map. Rather, what we had to do is we had to write it by hand because there is there is a function that'll read a 3D map, but not a RenderMan or a, or a Slim node already made. So make an SL box, and you come in here and you add a where is it? A texture. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you add a texture field by selecting texture, and then you hit plus, and it gives you a field like this. Now this is really important. What I typed here is a tickle expression. And tickle is a language for string substitution. And this is telling RenderMan where it can find our brick map once it's rendered. Because for every frame that's rendered, uh, there will be a different brick map. And for every pass, too. So I'm sorry, for every render layer. Um, so what we're going to do is to make this easy on ourselves, we created this expression. And you wrap it in square brackets. And what that's doing is that's telling tickle you're going to run a function. And the function we're going to run is pass info. So we're going to ask the pass info function that already exists in RenderMan to give us the info for the pass rman make global diffuse 3D pass, which is the one we made earlier, if you remember correctly. So I say, here's the pass name, rman make global diffuse 3D pass, and then I'm asking it for the file name. So this is, these are the two parameters to our pass info function, I say. Here's what the pass is, and here's what I want to know from it. And then when it comes to find this path, it'll automatically expand that and it'll give the whole path to where that file exists, which is really, really fancy. We don't have to touch that anymore. So now come to your code, and this is pretty easy. We just make a float, and uh, then you call texture 3D, and you pass in the name of this parameter right here, where we made our tickle expression. So you're saying, here's where my texture map lies. Then you feed in PS, which is the uh, point in shader space, I believe. Um, I'm not a shadering guy, really, so that is probably wrong, but feel free to correct me. And then you pass in the normal, because this is doing shading per point, and, and this is already existing inside of the shading language. These are preset variables. Then what we're doing here is, is we're asking for the occlusion channel from the brick map. We're saying, out of all the image channels that you have in there, give us the occlusion one. And then we pass in the name of this float that we made, and we said, whatever you get out of this, store it in out coal. Then you come down, and for result, you say result equals 1 minus out color, because we're inverting the out color. Hopefully, you won't have to do this every time, especially if you're at BYU. I did this and saved it so that we could just keep using it. But if you're setting this up yourself, you'll want to you'll wanna do this. And you go to your key, and you crank the light AO molt up to 1. Don't forget to do that. And then, simply enough, we're going to, oh, I'm going to make sure this stays on top. I'm going to select my fill light, and I'm going to select attach. Now, don't click add to scene, because that will mess things up. That's a, a little bit of an old way of doing things. So attach is the best thing to do here. What that's going to do is that's going to do our light in Maya. And it's going to add a custom RenderMan attribute to it, and that custom RenderMan attribute is going to be a reference to that slim shader. So let's... Let's do a render again and see if it worked. I sincerely hope that it did. It's doing the pre-pass. You can see here, it's preview. There's some nice occlusion there. It's making the brick map right now. And there we go. So, wonderfully, we have our fill light not 
making this muddy. Our fill light is not filling in the space where that occlusion is. If we didn't have the fill light in here, you wouldn't see any occlusion happening. But this is a great way to make your renders a little bit more contrasty, uh, help them to not wash out so much. And um, it's a little tricky to implement without knowing already. So thanks for watching, and thanks to Bert from DreamWorks, and thanks to Chris from Pixar for helping us figure this out. Have a great time. Bye-bye.